mistake, and the dumbest person in the world can get lucky. Right? And that's just the nature of the beast with especially multiple choice. With this kind of distribution, oh my god, you know, like, it's not normal. There's no normal distribution here. So we have to use this type of analysis for this type of data, logistic. And that's what the asymptotic distribution-free means. It's going to do your asymptote, your logistic, and it's distribution-free. It doesn't care whether it's normal or skewed or flat. It just doesn't care. In Levan, the option is WLS for the estimator, weighted least squares for complete data only. Okay? Which is one of the reasons I like to fill in all the missing data or decide about throwing away invalid people before I even attempt this. Weighted least squares or asymptotic distribution free or item response theory always have this idea of a threshold. The point in the scale where you are likely to switch from zero to one, from right to wrong. And that threshold is the decision point on this underlying scale called theta. Theta can mean attitude, theta can mean ability, can mean difficulty. You choose what how you understand this latent trait. And the threshold is the point at which you switch from being most likely to be a zero to most likely to be a one. Of course, you can imagine in an ordinal scale, there are n minus one thresholds. If you have a six point scale, there are five thresholds. A four point scale, there are three thresholds because it's the division point. So, could you repeat the last okay. one you said? So, if your rating scale has four options, mm -hmm. there can only be three between points. That's called the threshold. So, there are always the number of points minus one for thresholds. Two options, one threshold. Three options, two thresholds. It's not usually a problem here, but we, where it can be a problem is in an ordinal scale, if the probability of threshold one is higher than the threshold two, then your scale is not working properly. So the thresholds are supposed to be in order. The threshold for one to two must come before the threshold between two and three. Sometimes it doesn't. In polytomous scoring of test items, if you score an item zero, one, two, sometimes the threshold for two comes before the threshold for one because nobody gets one. You either get zero or you get two, and no one is getting a one score. And so you created this nice, friendly scoring system, but the people don't need it. It doesn't work. Yes. It doesn't work because people don't. You either can do it or you can't do it. You can do it all or you can't do any of it. Nobody's doing just some of it. And you've got a nice scoring rubric that isn't necessary because those who can do and those who can't don't even get some of it. This is some data that is available, and I, I'll kind of run through this quickly so that you get the logic and the ideas of what I'm doing rather than... So, this is a student whom I supervised for part of her thesis. She surveyed over 900 university-level teachers of English in China. And she ran, gave them 24 questions about assessment literacy. She borrowed a test from an American situation. They were all multiple choice and they were scored 0, 1. So the data set has 24 items, all 0, 1. And the question is, do these 24 items make one factor? So that we can just say, the total score indicate, is a good indicator of how good you are. So you can import it into SVSS. 
Uh, sorry, I, I imported it from it. So you've been given the data file in SPSS and you have to import it into our studio. And we published this article and it's, I think it's in the section. This is the syntax for it. This is what Levon requires you to do. The key is, so this is import the data. This is the model. The model says the TLQ is equal to, regresses onto Q1 to Q24. Like, can you imagine having to write that every time you wanted to write it on there? So you copy, you do it once, you save it, and then you just copy and paste it, right? That's why I've given it to you as a syntax file. I hate this. So that just creates the factor. This factor is equal to these items. And the guys in the back are going, why is this a problem? <laughs> I guess I'm a little more ADHD than they are. <laughs> I hate me doing this stuff. Now, this is, and any line like this with a hash means this is a comment. Don't do anything with it. So this tells you how to do the WLS or ADF estimator. And in order to do that, you have to tell Lavon that the items are ordered. 0, 1. So, ordered is inserted in the command. Ordered equals C for combine these things. And then, damn, it's not just copy and paste. You have to change, get rid of the plus sign, and then you have to introduce the double. What a, come on, guys. Now the guys in the back are like, oh, what's wrong with that? This is boring. Who wants to do this? And then you have to write estimator equals and in the parentheses WLS. All right. So fortunately, the syntax is there, so you can save it, copy, paste, change things. Yay! Then it, this tells you, give me the output. I want to know does this model fit, and tell me the standardized values because I just I always want to see those things. And give me the detail fit indices because I want to be sure that it really fits. And I want to see a picture because, you know, I like to see what I'm talking about. And people like to read what you're doing. Um, yes? The first line, the library have any. That's our studio command to bring in. It's using the Haven package to import. That's what our studio does. I understand you could use a different, if you're just in R, you could use the foreign package to bring it in, but I do everything in our studio because I hate R, and I need all the help I can get. And our studio says if you open a bracket, it automatically puts the closed bracket there for you, so you don't forget to put it in. If you start with one in parentheses, it puts the other one there for you. So it does some helpful things for dummies like me. All right. So this is what you get. It gives you. 24 items, I set the first one, it tells you the standardized value, the orange ones are kind of, well, that's not very much, and the red ones are negative, so the more your total score goes up, the more those ones go down. Ah! Something's wrong. So I'm going to leave it to you as a practice to suck it up and do this and then maybe can I, what happens if I take away these three will it fit better because maybe these are bad items in my test right that's what we have to be prepared for we hope every item is good and if you only lose 20 percent you should be very happy if you lose 50 percent you should be sad you should fire your item writers right so here's the thresholds all the thresholds are in order here, here's a standardized all, and you can see that's a pretty easy item to get right, minus one, up to plus five, plus seven, and the, although it, the negative numbers are not a problem here, they just tell you this is on the easy side, and the positive ones tell you it's on the harder side, so there's no panic here. You might want to worry about maybe this one, because it's not statistically significant. So you kind of go, that's item 22, 
Go back here, item 22. Oh, well, you know, it discriminated. Well, it wasn't, it was hard, but maybe this is a problem. Here's your fit statistics. Chi square, 587. Oh, shit, I'm in trouble because there's 252 degrees of freedom, but 252 into 587, wait a minute, that's under 3. It's just over 2, right? 250 times 2 is 500. That's nearly 600, so it's 2.4, maybe, rounding. So that would be okay. Here's my RMSEA. Oh, 0.039, yeah. Confidence <laughs> interval, 0.035 to 0.43, yeah. <laughs> What's the probability that it's less than 0.05? 100%. Because it is 100%. Right? So, hey, SRMR, oh, 0.07, oh, uh, would be like, nice to be a little lower. I'd like this a little lower. And maybe if I remove a couple of those junky items, it'll have a positive impact on SRMR. And here's the Bentler adjusted SRMR, oh, 067. And look, there's a million there. But you don't need to report them all. People will go, ah, don't make me read this. Just choose the ones that are important. And this is the Levan plot. It's a really pretty picture. I am really crappy at deciding how to control R and drawing, drawing pictures, and maybe some of you are GG plot experts. This is Levan plot, and it makes these nice things. The problem is. Uh, this is number one, it says 39. But back here, number one, 39. Oh, look at that, it's the same number. How convenient. <laughs> you look at me like, what, what was the problem with that? There, there is no problem, that's what, that's what I'm happy about. There is no problem, yay, it's the same number, yay. <laughs> Come on, you know, like, don't trust, check. Fundamental rule. And if you find, oh look, it worked. Yay! You should be happy. Alright, so that's binary. It's using the ordered and the estimated WLS. We're going to use the same thing in a multi-point ordinal scale. We talked about this yesterday. This is what the thresholds Here's a threshold, 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 threshold. Those for an ordinal six-point scale, those are the thresholds. And the weighted, robust weighted least squares estimator uses the means of variances. There's no assumptions about the observed variables, no assumption that says they're continuous. It just says, hey, whatever. It assumes the latent distribution is normal, underlying each categorical, so there it says that, that scale here is normal. Seems to work well if the sample size is 200 or better. Don't hold your breath on little things. The fit estimators are before. M plus uses a experimental, and, and you see posts on SEMnet where we're on M plus where people go, yeah, I don't understand the WRMR, why it's so high. And Linda Muthan always writes, it's an experimental statistic. The rule of thumb says anything below one is amazing, and close to one is good, and nobody knows for sure if you can trust it or rely on it, and you should. Not recommended as the sole criterion. How does Levon do it? Levon switches. If you use the ordered command, Levon automatically will switch to WLSMD. Thresholds and polychoric correlations. Remember way on Monday we had to mention polychoric correlations? Are first estimated using a two-step maximum likelihood estimation through bivariate contingency tables on the, based on the full weight matrix. Maybe Maxim understands those things. Most of us just need to nod. Okay. Parameter estimates and standard errors are obtained using the estimated asymptotic covariance matrix of the polycore correlation of threshold. Yeah, right, I still don't understand it. Right. <laughs> but I know what it's doing is that's what it's doing, and it seems like everybody says that's what it's supposed to do. 
A mathematically simple form incorporates the diagonal elements. So that's, remember, the diagonal element is the, the psi matrix of the things, of the uh, items loading on themselves. So in a diagonally weighted least squares in the fit function to prevent software from engaging in extensive computation and encountering numerical problems. So the formula is so complex that it, it could take the computer a long time. So they use some approximation, some cheats to make it solve in a bearable time. So in this case, I've got a data set that is the same student conceptions of assessment data set inventory, I should say, except for item, there's one item that the Brazil people didn't do, so you have to exclude that item, SI4. But there are eight factors, but this, 32 items, and two groups, 321 and 693. And the group is called country. Country equals NZ, country equals Brazil. There are six options. So a good question to ask is, is the WLSMD estimator more accurate, better fitting, than the conventional maximum likelihood estimation? Because I have an argument that says six points should be continuous. When I first published this, maximum likelihood said, yay, no problem. Daniel wanted to check it with WLSMV, so here's how you do it. Again, you need Levan and Semplot to draw the picture. Here's the model. Bad equals this, C E equals that, I G P. So there's your eight factors, like we've seen before. That Jamovi actually, that's what Jamovi created when we dragged and dropped. It created this model. And now we're going to tell it to do confirmatory factor analysis on this data set. Use this data. Order the items. Bad one, bad two, bad three. They're all ordered items instead of continuous items. Get the results, look at the fit, draw a picture. So, this is the standard output. Here's your WLS. And if we divide four into 24, it's somewhere around six, which seems kind of high. But maybe that's because we treated two samples from two different contexts as one thing. And we'll come to invariance testing where we can separate the two to see if allowing the two groups to be different from each other makes the fit better. And then we can test whether the fit, whether the two groups are equivalent. And, oh my god, this is so small. Here's the loadings and convariances. And you go, look, 7A, 7A, all the numbers look pretty strong. Here's the covariances. Statistical significant, everything significant. Uh, and everything significant and it's starting to look like, well, yeah, okay. That's all right. And then, these are the thresholds. And I've only put on the screen the thresholds for bad. Bad, number two, threshold number two, has a value of 0.057. That is higher than threshold one, and it is lower than threshold three, so it's in the correct order, but it could be zero. Well, minus 0.057 could be zero, you wouldn't care. That's not a problem to me. I want it to be so close to zero that you can't tell the difference. And I'm not worried. I don't, I don't need it to be below zero because there's minus eight and there's plus five, so it can be zero, it's okay by me. All right? So that statistical not significant doesn't worry me. He says the number could be zero. But it's not going to be suddenly one. And then here's my fit again. And here's my chi square 25, 400, maybe not so good. Um, what else am I looking for? RMSII. Okay, so it starts. Where does it start? Here. 0.068. Okay, that's all right. I can live with that. Lower 066 to 071. Now it's acceptable. What else do I want? SRMR? 
056, hey, below 0.06, that's good because remember my loadings on the items were really strong, so there's not a lot left over. And 054, so I can live with that. Where, where did CFI go? Oh, 98. TLI, 98. Whoa, okay. That seems to work. It seems to fit. There don't seem to be any major warnings. Hey. And that's what a SEM plot looks like. And oh my god. <laughs> I can't read those numbers, so you can't put this in a journal article or a book chapter or your thesis. You have to figure out how to make it look readable, right? And maybe Dimitri or Maxim or Leonid know how to manipulate the instruction to get it to be visible. I'm, I'm a dummy, I don't know. This is what Levon plot draws. It's much easier to see, but it's a mess. Why would they do that? <laughs> I mean, it's eight correlated factors, and they're all over the freaking place. Maybe there are better ways to organize it. I think there's a rotation that you can do, left or rotate this in SEM plot. You can rotate this so that it might be easier to read the numbers if the lines, if the lines are sideways, then the numbers won't be on top of each other. So there, I think it's called rotate and you can get it to rotate. But I, I kind of like the style, but I just hate the look where they organize things. They could have, could have had factor one going this way, factor two this way, factor three, factor four, you know, designing a nice diagram. A lot of journals want to see the picture and getting the diagram right will help your communication. So this would be, no. This is, ah, uh, no, can't you make it visible? What time is lunch? Fifteen minutes or half an hour? Half an hour. Half an hour. Wow, really? Okay. Okay, so, I've exposed you to a bunch of estimating things. I've exposed you to the ordered technique for binary and ordinal. You've got the maximum likelihood. So really, let's go back to the SCOA and Jamovi. Let's look, finish looking at that. And then you can, we can spend the afternoon practicing, doing it for ourselves. All right, so let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. Oh, wait a minute. No, no. <laughs> where, where, where was I? I was up to the full here. All right. I was up to here. This was from Jamovi, the eight factor CFA of the SCOA six just New Zealand high school students. The tests were exact fit. Chi-square 1427, degrees of freedom 467, P, blah, but that's almost 5 into 14 is somewhere around 3, in fact it's 3.06, which has a P of 0.08, so you make the argument. As per, well established that Chi-square is an overly sensitive test with large sample sizes and complicated models, the Chi-square over DF ratio is used instead. Um, 895, 8, 88, eight, eh, almost, guys, come on, what's wrong with you? But if you rounded it to two decimals, it's 0. 0.90. Yay! Don't ask. Shh. But you, I would report it with three decimals and I would leave it as 0. 0.895 because I'm pretty sure gamma hat will be over 0. 0.90. 0577, that's okay. Confidence interval, 0543 to 0611. I can live with that. And the AIC. That's what it gives you as default in Jamovi. So where's my gamma hat and where's my SRMR? They don't throw it in. Anyway, let's look at the loadings. So we, we've seen this before. Here's your loadings. They all look good. Everything's statistically significant. Everything fits well. Yay. 
Uh, covariances, yes, we've looked at this before. Here's the correlations. Some of them are negative, but they're supposed to be. And not everything is statistically significant, which means you could remove it. But it's interesting. Reviewers have a mixed opinion about that. Some reviewers go, wait a minute, even though it's not significant, I want it in the model. And you just mark it NS to show it's not significant. Me, I think, why, why clutter the picture with a path that is not different to zero? So why not just set it to zero, don't put it in there, and leave it alone? That's my thinking. But some reviewers do want to see the not significant path even though it's not significant. Because it sucks up another parameter. And this is the Levan uh, Jamovi output. Notice Jamovi doesn't have automatically put the values in. So using Levan semplot, at least you'll get the values. And you might have to learn how to rotate it so you can read them. But Jamovi doesn't even bother with. And the one thing it does do that's really nice, if this is part of semplot, is it puts a dashed line if you chose to use the technique, set the first loading to one. Uh, a lot of studies use that, and back seems right. It doesn't even make much difference. Toss a coin. Okay, in case you don't know, Levan, latent variable analysis, Levan, which it sounds in French like something you wash. Lave, you know, Levan. He's from Belgium, Yves Rossil. Really nice guy, University of Ghent, very helpful, very quick. He gave me a lot of help. He said, oh yeah, sure, here's the syntax for that. Oh, cool, thanks. Mm -hmm. Jamovi uses Levon. Inside R, if you downloaded R Commander, you would see that it uses the package SEM. It doesn't use Levon. Is Levon better than SEM? Uh, I don't know. Levon seems to be... Levan, the Levan community seems to be building a lot of features and capabilities in the software, so it seems to be winning the day right now. And the syntax is really simple. Model is equal to, is create the model from factor one name, name of the factor is equal to the, in Spanish this symbol is called tilde. T I L D E tilde. And this is the command. This causes these. This regresses, creates regressions onto these. Variable one, factor two. And notice it starts with this single apostrophe. And if you copy from Microsoft, it won't work. Because Microsoft adds a nice little feature called make it a smart apostrophe. And when you paste a smart apostrophe into R, it goes, what's that? I don't know what that is. Go away. It refuses to run and won't tell you why. I got caught on this a number of times. So you have to. So I always build all my syntax files now in a, in a notepad, not in Word. Don't use Word because it will make it pretty and it won't work in R. And then keep going. Fortunately, in Jamovi, if all you wanted to do was a correlated factor model, just use Jamovi. If you want to go beyond a correlated factor model, you have to go to RStudio and Levant. Maybe in five years, Levant, Jamovi will do all of this without having to make you right. Important code, because sometimes if you're not good with R, you need a little cheat sheet. The, these two together means create an object. The quote mark uses starts and closes instructions. This is caused by a factor. This is the covariance, cor cor correlation. A path is caused by, or a regression. And join the variables into a set with a plus sign. Until you get used to this, you probably up. How do I do this? So this is the Levan model for the eight-factor correlated thing that you've just done in Jamovi. Bad is create the SCOA6 model is created out of bad is 
factor is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. CE factor is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, IG, and so on. And it will automatically set the first one to 1. So if you don't think number 1 is the strongest one, put the strongest one first, because that's what Levon will do. Notice, beware copying from Microsoft again. After setting the model to get the CFA analysis, you have to do... Levon and they, they want to go, well, what's the fit? So they tell you...